Now we need to use these numbers to work out the answers to chemistry problems. Section 3.3 Quantitative Chemistry The calculations that you need to be able to do are finding the percent of an element in a compound, finding an empirical formula, finding the mass of product or reactant, and percentage yield calculations. Finding the percentage of an element in a compound by mass is relatively straightforward as long as you can find the MR of the compound. So do practice finding the MR if you need to. To find the percent of oxygen in H2SO4, first find the MR of the H2SO4. Now get the mass of all of the oxygen atoms in the formula and divide this by the MR. Then multiply it by 100 to turn it into a percent. In this case, 4 lots of 16 divided by 98 and that makes 65%. Remember to use the mass of all of the oxygen atoms in the formula, not just one of them. That's a very common mistake. Don't worry about how many decimal places to give your answer to. Unless the question tells you what to do, then the nearest whole number or one decimal place will be fine. The empirical formula is on the higher tier only, but it's not too hard to do if you follow a basic method. Use the table shown here to help you work out an empirical formula. The elements and their masses or percentages will be given in the question, so you can just copy those out. Remember, the relative atomic mass is on the periodic table. In this example, the mass or percent given for carbon is 60%. In the third column, we have divided this by the AR from the periodic table. That's 12 and got 5. We do the same thing for hydrogen. 13.3% divided by 1 is 13.3 and for oxygen 26.7% divided by 16 is 1.67. At this point, you might have a nice whole number ratio that you can use in a formula. If you don't, then you need to use the last column in the table to help. Find the smallest number you worked out in the mass divided by AR column. Divide all the numbers in this column by the smallest one. In this case, the smallest number is 1.67 for oxygen. Divide the number for carbon, that's 5, by 1.67 and you get 2.99. This is close enough to 3 to be rounded to 3. Doing the same for hydrogen, you get 13.3 divided by 1.67 is 7.96 and that's close enough to a whole number to round up to 8. Dividing the 1.67 for oxygen by 1.67 gives 1. Finally, write out the formula using the numbers from your calculation. In this case, 3 for the carbon, 8 for the hydrogen and 1 oxygen giving C3H8O. Finding the mass of product or reactant. In a chemical reaction, no atoms are created or destroyed, and this means that the total mass of the reactants and the products will be the same. If you only know about one of the reactants, or are trying to find out about just one of the products, you need to do calculations like this, however. In this example, we are told about the mass of ethanol we start with and asked to find the mass of carbon dioxide made. Start out by writing out the mass of the chemicals you are asked about and told about as they are in the equation. In this case, there is one ethanol in the equation and we can work out its MR.
the MR of ethanol, that's C2H5OH, is 46. And so we write this out underneath the ethanol in the equation. The other chemical in the question is the carbon dioxide. There are two lots of carbon dioxide in the equation. The MR of carbon dioxide is 44, so we put in two lots of 44, which is 88, underneath the equation. Write out the mass given in the question underneath the right chemical. In this case, 4.6 underneath the ethanol. Now, work out how to change the number from the equation that's 46 here, into the number from the question, 4.6 in this case. If you're really stuck, divide the number by itself and then multiply by the number you want to turn it into. In this case, divide by 46 and multiply by 4.6. Now do the same to the other number. So here, you divide 46 by 10 to turn it into 4.6, so you must do the same to the carbon dioxide number. 88 divided by 10 is 8.8 .8 grams. These are the hardest calculations in the C2 unit. And if you're finding them difficult, then don't panic. Work out the MR values of the thing you're told about and the thing you're asked about. This will almost always get you one mark out of three, and might even sneak you a second mark. Yield, and why it isn't always a hundred percent. Bit like your exam results. No atoms are destroyed or made, so why don't we get all the product we're supposed to get? You may not collect all of the product. Gases may escape through small gaps in the apparatus. And when solids or liquids are poured out to be weighed, some may be left inside the flask. Not all the reactant may react, and if the reaction is reversible, then some of the chemical in the container at the end will be reactants. This all means that you will get less than the maximum amount of product you could get. If you're asked why you don't get 100% yield, look to see if the reaction is reversible. If it is, this will be an easy thing to say to get a mark. Calculating the percentage yield is not too hard and often isn't done well, so if you can work it out, this will put you ahead of the other candidates. You will be told what mass of chemical the person in the question has made, and you'll also be told what the maximum mass he could have made is, or you may have calculated this in a previous part of the question. In the example given here, the pupil should have made 8.8 .8 grams, but only actually made 6.5. The percentage yield is 6.5 divided by 8.8 .8 multiplied by 100. This is 74%. Again, don't worry too much about the number of decimal places you give your answer to. That's all on quantitative chemistry. You'll probably need to do some more question practice on this section. Use the examples here as templates to follow to help you with other questions. Next, we're going to look at rates of reaction.